Intro to Cultural Anthropology, and I'm your professor, Professor Paling. This is our last lecture, the role of anthropology in studying the challenges of cultural change. Um, how can we identify and understand the processes that have shaped the past and will shape the future? We cannot tell precisely what these processes will be uh, produced in terms of future cultures. But like other fields, like geology, we can predict changes in cultural, and, sorry. Like geology, um, geologists can predict changes in landform based on erosion and other geological processes. In archaeology, we hope that we can predict the change of cultures using certain theoretical tracks. Um, one of the one of the three geo, uh, theoretical. <coughs> I'm going to do that over again. I'm moving all over the place here. Um, three, two. There's a lot going on behind me here. Uh, the university is filming a uh, video, an advertising video, but it kind of falls into what we're talking about here. How do anthropologists? Uh, What's the role of anthropology and how can anthropologists help us study changes uh, of cultures in the future? Well, there's three the major important theoretical uh, uh, ideas behind how we can study the future. The first is anthropologists believe that the world is heading towards a one world culture. This idea really didn't come about until the end of World War II when telecommunications uh, transportation and trade were starting to uh, unify. Uh, we start seeing after World War II uh, newspapers uh, from one country uh, appearing in other nations. We see food and television and the internet combining and uniting uh, groups across the world. Uh, countries like Japan become westernized. Um, what does western mean? It means taking on the identity and the social values and the cultures of uh, the new world, especially the United States and Europe. Um, according to anthropologists though, by the 23rd century, all political systems will be integrated. Think about that. All political systems, according to anthropologists, will start to be unified by the 23rd century. However, this one world uh, cultural theoretical tract doesn't seem to be working in modern recent times when there's a tendency for cultures to fragment. And when I say this, let's look at some of the uh, recent developments in our society. We have French Canadians looking to secede from Canada. We have the Basques and the Catalonians in Europe and in Spain looking to separate from their countries. Uh, look at uh, issues with freedom in Tibet. Uh, we start, we're starting to see political and social struggles in Turkey, Iran, and Iraq. The Shia from India, uh, there's civil unrest there. Uh, we see issues in Sri Lanka, in Nigeria, uh, in Ethiopia, we <coughs> have seen a, recently a new country developed. Now there's North and South Sudan. Um, what about Puerto Rico? You know, we're always talking about how Puerto Rico is going to become a state and how Puerto Rico wants to secede and become its own nation. So again, in our society right now, we're starting to see a lot of fragmentation of other cultural groups within countries. So I'm not sure if we're headed towards a one world culture or not, but that's something that we can debate. Um, one world cultures, we look at, about, uh, we look at economics. Um, the first multinational corporation was the Dutch East India Company in the 17th century. In the 1950s and on, these multinational corporations are starting to become major entities in the world. Um, when we say multinational corporation, we mean that there's usually one head office in a country, but its, organize, its organization and integration of production crosses different cultural and country boundaries. Um, sometimes these multinational corporations 
the interests lie within the boardrooms and not solely in the interests of the people in the countries that, that are in operation. Um, with technical revolutions, we see that a stronger growing economic elite. In, uh, the 19, in 1997, there were 10 individuals in the entire uh, say that again. In uh, 1997, 10 individuals in the United States alone controlled 37 national companies. And these 10 individuals were worth $2 trillion. When individuals become so wealthy, they become very powerful. And sometimes the power is able, these powerful individuals are able to thwart the wishes of governments. Um, the examples looking at the tobacco industry in our own country, but looking back to 1964 in Brazil, when corporations were so strong that they were destroying much of the Amazon basin, um, and we know of some of the dangers that the, these multinational corporations had and affected the Amamamo. Venezuela and Brazil. We know um, that these multinational corporations can do more uh, damage than good. We got to look at um, when multinational corporations start conglomerating other businesses and becoming too powerful, right? Um, we fought monopolies in this country in the past. Maybe it's time to reconsider um, economic and multinational businesses and their effect on culture. So again, is one world theory a good idea or a bad idea? Um, that is for you to decide. Um, certainly, um, we see a counter clash to the one world theory where indigenous populations are wanting, in, not only in our society, but in other societies, want to be independent. Another theory, other than the one world uh, theory, is the cultural plural, pluralistic theory that your book talks about. In the cultural pluralistic uh, theory, more than one culture exists in a given society. Uh, there is social and political interaction between the two groups. There is a rejection of bigotry, of bias, and racism. Um, but what is the, the real reality? When we look at our own society and cultural pluralism, let's take an example of New York Barrios. <coughs> where in, 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 in barrios and uh, ethnic groups in Boston where uh, you know South Boston is considered Irish you have Chinatown you have North End which is Italian but with these the reality is that you have Italian Irish African Jewish groups Asian Hispanic that are in their own ethnic uh, barrios or conclaves is this really cultural plural the real examples of cultural plural would be if you look at to our neighbors in North Canada and the French and English Canadians that live there, both um, understand and appreciate each other's cultures. Uh, examples of this highway signs written in both French and English. If you go to French Canada, um, menus are written in French, uh, but most individuals can speak both French and English. So, with cultural pluralism, uh, Canada being our example, here at NCC. We teach uh, the last uh, theoretical uh, uh, track that we're going to talk about is uh, multiculturalism. Multiculturalism is different than cultural pluralism. Uh, in uh, cultural pluralism, usually um, there is a dominant sus uh, cult subgroup, uh, and uh, sorry, in cultural uh, pluralism, there's always a dominant group and the subcultures that are part of that group adhere to the rules and regulations and to the uh, other social values and norms that the, the predominant group um, has. In multiculturalism, all groups are respected and um, considered important. So, uh, <clears throat> in your book, it discusses cultural pluralism versus multiculturalism. It's really up to you to determine what theoretical tract did you belong to, or that you uh, associate with, or or under, uh, can you appreciate more? So please look those over. Your book also talks about um, ethnocentrism, uh, global apartheid, structural violence, obesity, 
uh, struggles with um, with mental and uh, drug and alcohol disorders. I want you to read those on your own. <coughs> the really the role of anthropology is to study humankind, and of course, it's getting very loud in here because there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of movements um, and activities going on at the university today, but I think this is important because the role of anthropology is to study human activities. So, in conclusion, what is the role of anthropologists? Well, the role of anthropology is simple. It is to study humankind in all times and all places, to understand who we are, where we're going, and how we can uh, better our communities, our society, and our world. Um, the best way for anthropologists to study anthropology, sorry, to study humans, and the best way for you to appreciate um, humankind and societies is through education and interaction. So just by taking this class, by getting out there, reading ethnographies, studying uh, your society, and getting a better appreciation of who we are, you are already an anthropologist. So again, I thank you for taking this course. I know it's a little noisy and a little busy today, but I enjoyed uh, teaching and being your instructor for the course. Um, I, hope, I hope you learned a lot, <coughs> and uh, I encourage you to take a higher level of anthropology course in archaeology, linguistics, uh, cultural or biological anthropology. So uh, continue your academic uh, trajectory and it will be just as rewarding as it is uh, for me. All right. So thank you. Take care. At the end of this video, there will be a uh, course evaluation. Don't forget to study for your final, which is cumulative. Uh, but half uh, of the test, more than half the test, three-fourths of the test, will be on things covered after the midterm. So again, thank you. It was a pleasure. Um, take care. <coughs> and this also, is Derek Schell. <laughs> I'm the guy who's filming, and at the end of this, it will be blueberry. All right. <laughs> That's my cameraman, Derek Chow. He's a student. Um, also, please be aware of our uh, Kickstarter program. Uh, it's a link on our webpage. Uh, <clears throat> this year we will be going to Nicaragua, so please um, take a look. We'd like your uh, support and appreciation. So please spread the word about my archaeological project in Nicaragua, the pra Chicolastagua Archaeological Project. Uh, I'm one of the co-directors. My colleague Justin Lowry from uh, George Washington University is uh, also co-directing um, with uh, new research in the area. We hope to. Uh, we hope to learn a little bit more about the ancient peoples of Nicaragua and their and their contributions to our to our world, to our history. So again, thank you very much. Have a good day. Going into wing it mode. All right. This is how your professor works. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, we're going off script. No, 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 no. Welcome to our intro to our Speed of number two, one, three. This is lecture.